Hi everyone, this is Professor M. Does Science, and in this video I want to tell you about the translation operator. As the name says, the translation operator is the one that allows us to move quantum states from one point to another. So why do we care about the translation operator? The main reason is because it allows us to understand many properties of wave functions. Of these, perhaps the most famous is the fact that the wave function in real space is related to the wave function in momentum space by a Fourier transform. So what I want to do in this video is pretty straightforward. I want to introduce the translation operator, and we want to look at a number of its properties that are useful when working with wave functions. So let's get going. To study the translation operator, we need to start by considering the position x and momentum p operators, whose most important property is their commutator, which is equal to i h bar. So let's look at the translation operator, and we start by defining it as t alpha equal to e to the minus i alpha p over h bar, where alpha is a real parameter. For the time being, we're going to take this as the definition of the translation operator, and only later on in the video we're going to prove that in fact this is an operator that translates by an amount alpha. By looking at this definition of the translation operator, you may wonder what it means to have a function of an operator, like the exponential function here. The short answer is that the function of an operator is defined by its Taylor expansion, and if you haven't seen the video yet where I talk about functions of operators, do check the link in the description. Whenever we introduce a new operator, we need to understand some of its properties. The most important one is typically the adjoint of the operator, which tells us about what the operator looks like in the dual space. So let's write t dagger alpha, and this will be equal to e to the i alpha p dagger over h bar. Then we remember that the momentum operator is Hermitian, so p dagger is equal to p, which gives us e to the i alpha p over h bar. If we rearrange the exponent, we then obtain e to the minus i minus alpha p over h bar. And if we then look at the definition of the translation operator up here, we see that this is nothing more than t minus alpha. What this means is that the adjoint of the operator t alpha is equal to t minus alpha. So an immediate consequence of this is that the translation operator is not Hermitian. To investigate further properties of the translation operator, let's look at the action of t dagger alpha on t alpha. And explicitly writing this down, we obtain e to the i alpha p over h bar, e to the minus i alpha p over h bar, and combining these two exponents gives us the identity. Remember that in general we cannot combine exponents of operators like if they were numbers, but in this case we can because the two exponents commute, because the p operator commutes with itself. If we look at the complementary relation, we find that t alpha t dagger alpha is equal to e to the minus i alpha p over h bar, e to the i alpha p over h bar, which again gives us the identity. Putting these two results together tells us that the adjoint of an operator t alpha is equal to the inverse of the operator. And you'll remember that an operator whose adjoint is equal to its inverse is called a unitary operator. If you need further details about unitary operators, do check the video linked in the description where I talk about them. So far we have introduced the operator t alpha, which we have called the translation operator, although we haven't yet proved that it is indeed a translation operator, but nonetheless we have looked at a number of its properties and we have figured out that the adjoint of the operator is equal to its inverse, so it is a unitary operator, and additionally these two terms are also equal to t minus alpha. Before we can prove that the operator t alpha is indeed a translation operator, we need to look at an additional property of this operator, which is its commutator with the position operator. So let's write down the commutator of x with t alpha, which explicitly is equal to the commutator of x with e to the minus i alpha p over h bar. So what is the commutator of an operator with the function of another operator? You can find full details in a video linked in the description, but as a summary, we have that for operators a and b, such that they each commute with their commutator, that is, the commutator of a with the commutator of a and b is equal to zero, and the commutator of b with the commutator of a and b is also equal to zero, then for such operators, we can write that the commutator of a with the general function f of b is equal to the commutator of a and b multiplied by the derivative of the function of b. If we now look back at the commutator we're interested in, we see that the relevant operators are x and p, and therefore we need to calculate the commutator of x with the commutator of x and p, which is equal to zero, and likewise the commutator of p with the commutator of x and p is also equal to zero, of course both results following from the canonical commutation relation, which tells us that the commutator of x and p is equal to i h bar. 
We can now finally put all these results together to evaluate the commutator we started with, and we find that the commutator of x with t alpha is equal to the commutator of x with p times the derivative of t alpha, which is equal to minus i alpha over h bar e to the minus i alpha p over h bar. We know that the commutator of x and p is i h bar, we also can recognize this term as t alpha, and we can therefore write the final expression as equal to alpha t alpha. With this commutator we now have all the ingredients that we need to prove that the t alpha operator is indeed the translation operator. Let us start by looking at the eigenvalue equation for the position operator, x hat acting on the ket x is equal to the eigenvalue x acting on the ket x, and then we consider the action of the position operator on a new ket which is formed by the action of t alpha on the ket x. Using the commutator we have just proved, we can write x t alpha as equal to alpha t alpha plus t alpha x, and we can plug this expression in the equation above to obtain alpha t alpha plus t alpha x acting on x is equal to alpha t alpha x plus t alpha x hat x. This last term is simply the eigenvalue x acting on the ket x, and therefore combining both terms we obtain alpha plus x t alpha acting on the ket x. So what do these results mean? Well, they mean that if the ket x is an eigenvector of the operator x with eigenvalue x, then the ket t alpha x is also an eigenvector of the operator x with eigenvalue x plus alpha. What this means is that we can write that the action of the operator t alpha on a ket x gives us another ket x plus alpha. So indeed we confirm that the t alpha operator is a translation operator that translates a ket by an amount alpha. It does also make sense now to remember that the inverse of the operator t alpha is equal to t minus alpha, because if this operator essentially translates kets, then a translation by alpha has an inverse as a translation by minus alpha. Before we finish I want to derive two additional properties of the translation operator that are very useful when studying many quantum mechanical problems. The first one is to look at what the translation operator looks like in dual space. So we write the action of t minus alpha on x as equal to x minus alpha, and the corresponding expression in dual space is that the bra x minus alpha is equal to the bra x t dagger minus alpha by the definition of an adjoint operator. But we also showed earlier that the adjoint of t alpha is equal to t minus alpha, so we can rewrite this whole expression as the bra x and t alpha. The second property of the translation operator I want to look at is its Taylor expansion. So we can see the translation by an infinitesimal amount minus epsilon, and by the definition of the translation operator this is e to the i epsilon p over h bar, and if we Taylor expand the exponential we obtain 1 plus i epsilon over h bar p plus a term of order epsilon squared. These two properties of the translation operator are extremely useful in many quantum mechanical problems, and you can find links in the description to multiple videos where I use them thoroughly. To finish, let's summarize what we have learned in this video. We have started with the position operator x and the momentum operator p, whose commutator is i h bar, and we have defined a translation operator t alpha as e to the minus i alpha p over h bar. We have found that this operator has some interesting properties which include the fact that its adjoint is equal to its inverse, so it is unitary, and both of these terms are equal to t minus alpha. Using these properties we have then shown that the action of t alpha on a ket x is equal to a different ket x plus alpha, confirming that the t alpha operator is a translation operator that translates a ket x by an amount alpha. In this video we have learned about the translation operator that tells us about moving quantum states from one point to another. So what next? There are quite a few consequences of translation operator, perhaps the two most famous ones are the fact that the real space wave function is related to momentum space wave function by a Fourier transform, and the second one is the fact that the action of the momentum operator on wave functions is such that it calculates their derivative. I hope you liked the video, and if you want to send suggestions for future videos, please subscribe.